completely repeal uh, the Patriot Act. I saw that. Yeah, I know. Let's check that out. In our country, there are fundamental freedoms and rights that are enshrined in our Constitution, guaranteed to every single American, among which are our right to privacy and protection of our civil liberties. Now, the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution very specifically prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures without a warrant based on probable cause. But over the last two decades, in part because of information revealed by Edward Snowden, we now know that there have been ongoing breaches of our civil liberties through programs that were instituted through the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act, which basically allowed agencies within our government to conduct mass illegal surveillance on Americans without a warrant or probable cause. Uh, for example, Section 215 of the Patriot Act has been used for years by the NSA to collect uh, domestic phone records of millions of law-abiding Americans, again, without any kind of probable cause. FISA Amendments Act did something similar, but it allowed for collection, mass collection of our emails. The intelligence community has not been transparent or honest with the American people or, or even Congress about what they've been doing. Some of you may know when James Clapper, who was the former director of national intelligence, was asked by the US Senate in an open hearing about whether or not the government was conducting this mass surveillance, this mass collection of information on everyday Americans, he lied under oath and said no. So to address these issues, my friend and colleague, Congressman Tom Massey and I introduced legislation called the Protect Our Civil Liberties Act to make sure that Congress re-examines how best to strike this balance of protecting our national security interests while also ensuring that the constitutional rights of every single American is preserved. So here's a basic summary of what our legislation would do. Number one, it would repeal the Patriot Act, again, which included those provisions allowing for the mass collection of telephone metadata on, every, on uh, everyday Americans. Number two, it would repeal the FISA Amendments Act, which contained those provisions allowing for mass collection of our emails. Three, it would make retaliation against federal national security whistleblowers illegal, people like Edward Snowden, and it would make sure that those who engaged in this kind of retaliation would be terminated. Uh, four, it would ensure that uh, any collection of information, again, on an American must be based on a warrant with probable cause. Five, it would prohibit uh, these government mandated quote unquote back doors from being built into electronic devices or software that would allow the government to bypass encryption or other privacy technology built into those systems. Number six, it would mandate that the government accountability office, the GAO, would regularly monitor domestic surveillance programs for compliance with the law. This would happen on an annual basis. Protection of our civil liberties is essential. Join us in making sure that our constitutional rights are upheld. Call your member of Congress and ask them to co-sponsor HR 8970 today. So wow. somehow, some way, Tulsi still managed to get election integrity worked in there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and of course, a plethora of other things, but it just, um, you know, her ability to reach across the aisle and work with Thomas Massey and, yeah. and like talk about this bill that a lot of people, and I, I don't think it's coincidence, a lot of people don't realize Biden has bragged about uh, uh, writing the Patriot Act, mm -hmm. funny enough. And also, Kavanaugh is the, the, the legal mind behind all the, the law, the legal workarounds within the Patriot Act. People don't know that. Wow. And so, I like, didn't know that. yeah, a lot of people don't know. That's why when they were like fighting Kavanaugh over the doctor, the doctor forced, I'm like, why don't you just hit him over this Patriot Act nonsense? Because all this stuff is unconstitutional. Yeah. And he's the one that kept giving his rubber stamp on it and creating the, 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 the rhetorical workarounds within the um, within the Patriot Act. But Patriot Act has been abused. Oh, yeah. Over and over and over and over and over. There's, there's not been any practical application of the Patriot Act in a way that meaningfully helps people um, and keeps us safe. And, not, and what I believe to be ever. What do you think? I think that Tulsi's a beast. Yeah. And I think that this is exactly what we need right now. I don't see anyone else pushing forward legislation that protects our civil liberties. Yeah. Other than like, you know, like a Thomas Massey, 
Uh, yes. Justin Amash. Uh, and by the way, Justin Amash actually just recently came out on Twitter and just tweeted out, Congress is an illusion. I was like, what? I was like, oh shit, it's getting real in here. Um, I mean, which I think a lot of people agree with. But um, now my thing is, I don't know how many people are going to co sponsor that. I, I'm just going to be honest. Why do we not know this? <laughs> you feel me? Like, that shouldn't even be a question. Because, yeah. You know, it, uh, uh, Edward Snowden, his revelations. Uh, allowed for Congress to pass legislation because they found out the NSA was obviously using the Patriot Act to violate people's civil liberties. But like that was censored around the Patriot Act. Yes. Once that got released, there should have been a bill immediately then and there saying, look, we got to repeal this. And, yeah. and, and we got to get specific. It should have happened immediately. And we shouldn't even be talking about pardoning Snowden at this moment. Yeah. Like, it should have like, been. It, sh it should have been happened. Mm -hmm. Especially when we have people that are literally putting their lives on the line to protect American people. Yeah. That's 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 what the whistleblower is designed for. Mm -hmm. Reality winner, Chelsea Manning, uh, obviously Julian Assange. Yes. Um, and there's some recent leaks that just came out that were crazy. Basically, Julian Assange actually got in touch with the State Department because he found out there was a rogue actor uh, that used to work for WikiLeaks, although now it's, it's being thrown around that he probably never worked for WikiLeaks. He was always there to muddy the waters. But basically, he was calling the State Department in 2011 to warn him, like, hey, there's some information about to leak out. But, like, it isn't us. It's, and he warned them because, like, if y'all have people out in the field mm -hmm. that could be compromised, you need to warn them. Yeah. Like, cause they're gonna, their lives are gonna be on. The line. And this just came out. This just came out yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, the day before. And but basically, Julian Assange is such a class act that with the State Department that he vehemently despised. Yeah. He still did not want to put anybody's life in danger because of a mistake that may ha may or may not have had to do with WikiLeaks. Because when he releases information, it's always in a way that doesn't harm anyone's life or puts exactly. anyone in danger. Uh, Chelsea Manning said, you know. That's how we knew that journalists, American journalists, yeah. were shot out the sky in Iraq. And then, of course, we were committing war crime on war crime on war crime. The NSA spying from, you know, that we found out through Edward Snowden. Like, all these revelations, um, and in Vault 7, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Vault 7, but that's basically, uh, I mean, that's a whole different rabbit hole, but basically that was revealed by WikiLeaks too, showing how the government can get access to our phones, they can control our car, yeah. they can, uh, I mean... It's it's the the and then when you marry that with the fact that Instagram just caught yeah got caught yeah they can stream while you're on their camera stream not record you not listen to you they're already listening we already know that like, they, everybody this Christmas I'm sure has figured out Amazon and Instagram <laughs> listening yeah <is>. Alexa uh, <laughs> we but, over here talking to Alexa <laughs> but Facebook's relationship with the U.S. government is so close and obviously they own Instagram how do we know that they're not you know, commandeering that infrastructure to, to, to do whatever. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I, I I'm like, is, is this real? Are we in, is this a real situation? Because it can't be. And what frustrates me the most is that people are not speaking out about this. Mm -hmm. We have a, a handful, handful, a handful of people that are really fighting, fighting for not just whistleblower protection, but also to take them at their word, like seriously, yeah. like see them as, if as people, heroes. Yeah, exactly. Like we should be uplifting. Here, them. here we are putting them in prisons, uh, torturing them when they're in, in, so in in the we talk, in in the in the hood in the ho what the homies you know snitches get stitches. That's also true. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. Because <laughs> they're, they're not you know snitches ain't blowing whistles. They they just telling. Yeah, they yeah. say people love to tell it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And, and and you know we don't you don't go to a, once again you don't ingratiate yourself with a corrupt institution. Yeah, um, and harm poor people in working it's, class. Exactly. That's why snitches get stitches. For in case y'all curious. Yeah, it yeah. isn't just because people just hate people who who like hold people accountable or tattletale. that's not what it is it's you're ingratiating yourself with a corrupt policing institution and it's usually because you're getting some type of benefit for exactly. it exactly um and and basically you have people who did the opposite mm, they they told the world about the corrupt institution and they're being treated as if thank you they're being treated as if they committed a crime when it's actually the opposite it's, but it's especially the exact chelsea opposite. manning right so when she saw what she saw and she saw a crime being committed um, by the U.S. military. Yeah. If so, if it would have come out later, and she would have been one of the ones in the threat to had seen it, she actually she by would've, UCMJ would have gotten punished for yeah, it. Yeah, she she probably would have gotten dishonorably discharged or whatever the case is. Exactly. You know, she 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 took a risk that she should have been praised for. Mm -hmm. 
and she and she's getting luckily her due now but it's it's i mean she ended up getting rearrested where the trump administration bad. tried to put her basically in double jeopardy which yeah. of course they didn't have anything on her no they eventually released her but not before they started charging her what a two thousand or two thousand dollars per day every single day she was in jail um the only good news that came out of that is obviously chelsea manning is back at home but um they got rid of the grand jury for wikileaks like so then the grand jury's gone uh, that, and that's been around since uh, the, the Obama administration. So that's a good thing. But Chelsea Manning should have never been arrested again. And so what, what I'm hoping, uh, obviously, with this legislation. yeah, what this legislation could do and, sh- and should be cheered for is the tyranny that we have been under, where we've seen the over surveillance. Um, we've had whistleblowers from CIA and other places come out and, and just blow up the lid on this. What I'm hoping it does is, is expose anybody who yes. is claiming to be on the side of the people because from my, from what I've seen a lot of a lot of progressives have criticized the Patriot Act yeah in Congress yeah haven't done anything about it exactly <laughs> yeah except for you know Tulsi doing what she does but does it, is this something that when you were running for office uh, that like you actually got to talk about on the campaign trail at all not necessarily the Patriot Act specifically but just over surveillance is that anything mm-hmm. that anybody was interested in mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I tell a lot of people, um, and I, I, I don't, I want to say this properly without talking down about anybody. Okay, when you're talking about the electorate in in the district that I was running in, um, we're not talking about people that are interested in over surveillance and yeah, priorities. The, the, it's it's, it's <laughs> not priorities. it's, it's yeah. not the priority. Mm-hmm. You know, th- that's a personal priority. It, but that is that's not the district's priority it it, it hurts it's sad um, but it's just not on the list yeah. you know and and we need to get to a place where it is on the list and we can get rid of these other priorities but and to be and to, to be real honestly that's how Frederick Wilson has managed to get away with a lot exactly. because the issues that are most important to the entire country that she knows are the, in, in the position she knows a right to take she's been able to avoid yeah. you know in in and really never even be challenged because she kind of came in like with a special election. Yes, she came and, in. With, it was during a census year. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, but that that's how people largely go on challenges because we get put in these situations as a, you know, especially in that area in Miami Gardens, you know, they got, they have to worry about, I know like in California, in Southern California, like immigration is a major issue out there. Yeah. Uh, it's still an issue out there too. And Haitians yeah. get deported more than anybody else out here. Yeah. Like in that district largely made, is made up of Haitians. Um, you know, Medicare for all, obviously black people suffer from inadequate health care more than any other group in the country. And in addition to that, they, we, we, you know, like get women, black women, especially get disparate treatment. Like it's bad. Yeah. I mean, there was a story about how a doctor didn't want to like give somebody an epidural or like treat them like track like oh she's a black woman she's strong she can yeah she I went into preterm labor at 24 weeks and the nurse was like you're just gonna have to deliver this baby Oof. I said I'm sorry what and my mother looked at me and said don't look don't listen to a word she said you you're gonna get through this pregnancy I ended up giving birth at almost 41 weeks yeah but this lady was like already no you know you you were gonna take my baby out early you weren't even gonna try mm-hmm. because they like people forget how like the rate how racist the healthcare system can be um, and but those are the type of issues that like a Miami Gardens community Detroit yeah. Flint Michigan you know uh, Houston Texas and in and, and Atlanta these are the type of issues that people speak to and, and so that's why it's kind of hard to find that balance right yeah and I always say as, as if you're running for US Congress you have uh, actually two campaigns you're running yes you need to know your constituents and their issues and their priorities but you also because you're running for US Congress you have to know the country's priorities and the issues that are exactly. most more focused on figure out a way to marry those and balance them and hopefully um, educate your constituency at the same time while you're running so that the, exactly. when the, the time comes or maybe you don't win maybe you do but now when you get to Congress they're paying attention and looking out for those issues and backing you because those issues have now become important to them because you've educated them um, which should at least partially be the job of a congressperson so um, shout out to Tulsi once again for knocking that out yes. uh, we're not gonna hear enough about it um, we're not gonna hear enough about it we should be hearing more about it yes. you need to tag your Congress people to co-sponsor that legislation uh, but of course Congress has been been kind of disappointing is that the the nice way to say it 
Yes, disappointing. they're disappointing, but you know the power is still in the people. Mm. So with enough phone calls and, and and enough, I tell everyone that's your that's your leverage right it there. It works. Call people. Tulsi actually said it works. It, she said you have no idea how many times people answer the phone. How do we burst a pipe? We gotta put pressure on it. Mm. 